Hey there, today I wanted to take a uh, moment to go over RxJS higher order mapping operators. Uh, these mapping operators are a very important part of working in the observable based world. And if you're used to working with async await in that kind of paradigm, uh, it can be very difficult to wrap your head around some of these operators. So I wanted to take a moment to just review um, some of the most common operators. So if you want to follow along, I'm just working in a basic TypeScript file. I've just imported some things from RxJS uh, that we're going to be using. And the only dependency I have is RxJS. So if you want to follow along, you can install this um, or you can just clone this repo. I'll put the link in the description. And to actually compile this code, uh, I'm going to be running a command npx ts node index.ts which will compile it and turn it into regular JavaScript so we can see what's going on. Uh, I'll put the link in the description on how to set this up if you want to compile along with me. And before jumping in, I would just like to let you know that all of these examples that I'll be going over are straight from the learnrxjs.io docs. Uh, I found them to be a very helpful resource to reference when learning these operators. So I'll include a link in the description to those docs if you want to take a look at their examples. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called source. Um, and we're going to use the RxJS of here. We're going to say source of. Uh, and of just admits, emits an observable. So we can pass in whatever we want here. In this case, I'm going to pass in two values, uh, two numbers here. And all this is doing is just going to emit 2,000 and 1,000 right after it in a stream. Uh, this is an observable stream here, and so we're just going to emit these values, right? So if I wanted to, I could uh, subscribe to of, and we can const log value and see what it looks like. And uh, if we save and go ahead and compile, Right, we see two values are emitted in the exact order we'd expect. It's the order that we supplied them. So now that we've set up an example stream, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our first operator, concat map. So before we go ahead and take a look at concat map, it's important that you have a good understanding about what map does in RxJS to begin with. Uh, and if you're not familiar, all map does is it takes the current value being emitted in the observable stream and it allows you to transform it into anything you want. You can map it to anything. So if we turn our initial source observable here into a let and reassign it to the observable piping. So if you're not familiar, you can pipe uh, things into an observable. So in this case, we're going to map and we're going to take the current value being emitted as a parameter and we can return to wherever we want. So if we return value plus 100, right, and then we subscribe to this observable, we should see 100 being added on to each value. We log out. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see here uh, that 100 has been added to our values. And that's because we have transformed every value being emitted, in this case 2,000 and 1,000, and added 100 to it. And we're subscribing to this. So remember, this is just one big stream. Uh, and in the end, this is what the final value gets turned into. Right, so remember, in the world of observables, everything's a stream. So, you know, as the source is being emitted, we're piping things into it. We can transform the data before it reaches our final subscriber. And that's what we do here with map. So hopefully we understand what's going on there. I'll comment this out uh, and just leave a note. And let's go ahead and take a look at concat map, our first operator. So in order to do this, um, I'll first give a brief overview of what concat map does. So uh, concat map is going to uh, allow us to do two things. First of all, it's going to flatten all inner observables. Um, and we'll take a closer look at what that means in a second. But in addition, it's going to 
handle each value emitted uh, in of here. It's going to handle it sequentially, and it's going to work similar to map, where each value is going to get passed in as it's emitted. And it's important concat map works in order. So it's going to take 2,000, do whatever it wants with it, and then move on to 1,000. So you may be wondering, how is that any different from map? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. So uh, I'll put a new const here, const concat map example. And we're going to use source.pipe, and we'll call concat map, right? And we still get the value that gets emitted, 2,000 in this case, and then 1,000 works in order of values that are emitted. It doesn't move on to the next value emitted until we've completed, that is, we've completed all the work that we're doing uh, with the first value. So in order to take a better look at this, let's go ahead and um, use the up operator again here uh, to send another observable through. So we'll go ahead and console log and say delayed by val milliseconds. And we'll go ahead and pipe a value at the end of this. And we're going to call delay, which is an RxJS um, operator here that does exactly what it, you think it does. It just delays the stream by however long we say. So in this case, we'll use val. OK, so that's great. Now, let's go ahead and subscribe to this and uh, take a look. So I burned my subscription to this concat map example. And before I explain what's going on, let's just go ahead and run it. Um, so if we go ahead and run it, we'll see exactly what we'd expect to see. Delayed by 2,000 milliseconds and then delayed by 1,000 milliseconds. That is, the observable values here are passed in in order. And importantly, we didn't move on to this second value here, 1,000, until we finished working with the first one. So we got the value in cat map. We enclosed this whole expression in it. We have a callback here. And in that, we have another observable that we attach a pipe with a delay to it. So the first observable value admitted in this case, 1,000, is being delayed by 2,000 milliseconds, excuse me. And then we move on, because once it's finished, we can move on to the next value. I think it'll become more clear uh, the difference that merge map brings in. So let's go ahead and take a look at merge map. And I'm actually going to have very similar code as concat map. So I'll uncomment this out. And the only thing we're going to change is now we're just going to use merge map here. And uh, before I explain what's going on, I just want to run this code and we can see the effects that this has. So let's save that and then run. So interestingly now, the order is reversed. We can see delayed by 1,000 milliseconds followed by delayed by 2,000. So you might be thinking, what's going on here? Is uh, 1,000 emitted first and then 2,000? Well, not quite. What's going on here is that merge map by design, it maps each value that an observable emits, so similar to concat map and map itself. But the difference that merge map has is it allows every observable emitted in a stream to be processed at the same time. So they all get passed in to our pipe operator here at the same time, which is why uh, when we de delay by 1,000 milliseconds, it finishes first, gets console logged by our subscription, so we see it first. And then once the other value, 2,000, finishes, we then see the log. So both of these run at the same exact time, while in cat map, it was sequential. So hopefully that's a bit clearer. Let's comment this out, and we can move on to exhaust map and switch map, which work in very similar ways. Now to demonstrate exhaust map, uh, I'll go ahead and create a new variable here. I'm going to call it source interval. And we're going to use RxJS operator interval. 
and interval, uh, you can see what it does here. It creates an observable that emits sequential numbers every specified interval. So we should expect every 1,000 milliseconds, every second, uh, a number gets emitted starting from zero and going upwards, right? So we're also going to create another variable called delayed interval. And it's going to be source interval a pipe. So it's a, a pipe operator. And inside, we're going to delay 10 milliseconds. And then we're only, what this operator take does is it says we're only going to take the first four values emitted from the thing we're piping. So in this case, source interval. So we're going to delay the value being emitted by 10 milliseconds and then take the first four values. So we should expect to see um, 0, 1, 2, 3 get emitted. And that will be delayed by 10 milliseconds to begin with. OK, so now let's go ahead and actually demonstrate exhaust map. So I'm going to go ahead and use ArcGIS operator merge, uh, which works similar to merge map, but it's not actually mapping anything. We're just merging different streams, uh, observables themselves. So they run at the same time. So in this case, we'll pass in delayed interval, which we created above, and then another observable, which just emits true immediately. OK, so next, uh, I'll add a pipe here, and we'll call exhaust map. We're going to pass in an empty arg and call source interval dot pipe. And we're going to take uh, the first five values from it in this case. And don't forget, we need to subscribe and we'll console log the value. So let's go ahead and save that and just see what happens if we run the output. Okay, so if we go ahead and take a look, we can see the value of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 were emitted. So let's go ahead and break this down a bit more. So to start off, if you noticed, uh, I said earlier that we would have expected to see the values 0, 1, 2, and 3, the first four values emitted from our delayed interval here. But if we look closely, we can see five values were actually emitted. Uh, so what's going on here? I mean, we did pass in delayed interval. Um, so why did we see five values get emitted? Well, um, if you haven't guessed it yet, it's because we've used exhaust map. Um, and what exhaust map does is it takes the first value emitted in the stream um, and it and it uses it, it processes it, you could say. And, and while it's using it in the callback for whatever stream uh, observable input it's, it's being used in, um, all other values are ignored while it's uh, processing. So in this case, we merged two streams at the same time. So um, this of true value is mapped to the interval observable, emitting one value every second. This one here, right? Source interval dot pipe take five values. Okay, so that happens immediately. But then the delayed interval should be happening at the same time because it's merging, which, as we learned it before, um, executes the observable inputs at the same time. But remember, we call the delay of 10 milliseconds here. So this is emitted immediately, passed into the inner observable. And then when delayed interval is ready and gets passed to the inner one, it gets ignored because this of true value uh, has already been emitted and it's already being used. So uh, all of the other emissions from delayed interval are completely ignored because this is already running, which is why we see five values instead of four. OK, and lastly, um, for switch map, I'm going to go ahead and just give more of a theoretical example because I think it's easier to understand um, what switch map does is it works similar to exhaust map, um, but instead of ignoring the other observable input values uh, that get emitted, sorry, the, the, the values of the observable that get emitted 
um, if one value is already being processed in the pipe, it'll switch to it, switch to the, uh, the new value um, and drop what it's doing with the old one. So you can imagine a scenario where you have a click listener that whenever a user clicks, um, we, we stop what we're doing and, and we process the new event. So say for example, we had from event uh, and we pass in a fake document. We don't really have this right now. There's no click listener. But for, say for example, we did and we can pipe um, switch map in here and say inside of here we had an interval that we had set up with a thousand milliseconds. So in this case, what would happen is every time a user clicked on the document, the web page, the interval would reset because when they first clicked, that would send the value into our pipe here. And whenever a new value gets emitted, second click, third click, it switches and uh, the, the, the new observable value is the one that gets passed in, so it switches. So instead of ignoring values, like an exhaust map, we switch, which is why it's called switch map. So hopefully this shed a little bit of light on RxJS operators. Uh, I found them to be a little confusing to work with at first, but after you get the hang of it and you practice them for a bit, um, they become second nature and really nice, easy to work with. So hopefully this was helpful um, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.